Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I'm Maria Villarina, a student from B Ed One. I am here today to discuss about the interactions of living things in coral reefs and in tropical rainforests. This lesson is very interesting since we're going to tackle on how do living things interact among each other in coral reef as well as in tropical rainforest. To begin with, let me show you some pictures. Do you know what are these pictures? As we can see, it is a picture of a coral reef and a tropical rainforest. Do you know what are these pictures? These pictures show us an ecosystem. But, do you know what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is an environment where both living things and non-living things exist and interact with one another. A coral reef ecosystem is formed from the skeleton of tiny marine invertebrates called corals. Coral reef can be found in any ocean around the world, although they are more common in the warm, shallow waters in the tropics. Coral reefs ecosystem are also called rainforest of the seas, as it is the most diverse ecosystem in the world. Coral reefs serves as marine biome and habitat with approximately 25% of all marine species which includes fishes, mollusks, crustaceans, echinoderms, jellyfishes, sponges, corals, and other marine animals. The living things and non-living things in the coral reef ecosystem interact with one another. Coral reefs are important as they serve as breeding grounds or nurseries for small growing fishes. The producer, like the seagulls, provides food and nutrients to the consumers. These consumers include sea turtles, crabs, fishes, and other marine animals. Do you know that there are factors that can contribute to the formation of the coral reef? These are temperature, stable salinity, light penetration, and water movement that influences how coral reefs are formed. Also, the coral reef have a different categories, namely the fringing reefs, barrier reefs, and coral atolls. The fringing reef is the most common type we see located in the seashore of continents of islands. While the barrier reefs, instead of growing out from the shore, they are separated from the land by an area of water called lagoon. While the atolls is a circular reef that enclose a lagoon. There are interactions that exist in coral reefs ecosystem, namely the mutualism, commensalism, competition, parasitism, and predation. Mutualism interaction takes place when both organisms benefit in their relationship. The mutualism gives hope of the coral reefs to build up because over the years, the tiny plant-like organisms called algae live in the body of the coral. Then, the algae provides carbohydrates and oxygen to the corals through photosynthesis, while corals provides a safe environment for algae. The second interaction of living things in coral reefs is the commensalism. Commensalism occurs when two organisms live together without harming each other. An example of this is the barnacles attached to the shell of the turtle. When the turtles swim, barnacles will be able to get constantly nutrients in the water. In the process, the turtle is not harmed. The next interaction is parasitism. 
The parasitic creatures could be crustaceans or leeches attached to the skin of the fish. Then, the competition is an interaction wherein organisms compete for survival. The best example of this is when fishes and coral reefs compete for resources like food and dissolved oxygen in the water. Next is depredation, which is an interaction wherein one organism kills smaller organism for food. Example of this is when big predatory fishes eat small fishes. So now, does coral reefs are important? Yes, of course. Coral reefs are very important since it is the habitat of the marine lives and shelter for them to protect themselves. The marine life in and around the reef provides a healthy exchange of nutrients that ensure a flow of vital minerals and vitamins. Coral reefs protect coastlines from storms and erosion, also provide jobs for local communities, and offer recreation opportunities. They are also a source of food and new medicines. Over the half a billion people depend on reefs for food, income, and protection. These ecosystems are culturally important to the indigenous people around the world. So, we need to protect our coral reefs by just simply doing things such as hiring a local guides to support the economy, removing all trash from an area, never touching or harassing wildlife in reefs areas, avoiding dropping your boat anchor or chain nearby a coral reef, also by minimizing using of fertilizers, just saving energy at home and in work, reduce storm water runoff and many for things to protect the coral reefs. So now, let's move on to the tropical rainforest. What is a tropical rainforest? A tropical rainforest is the Earth's oldest living ecosystem dominated by tall evergreen trees. They are found in the tropics or areas near the equator like the Philippines. Since areas in the equator receive direct sunlight, tropical rainforests have a high average of temperature throughout the year. They are also very wet place as they receive high amount of rainfall every year. Tropical rainforests are also the most diverse land in the ecosystem. They serve as the home to more types of plants and animals. Do you know that tropical rainforests have four layers containing different species of living organisms? The first layer is the emergent. It is the topmost layer made up of the tallest trees around 130 to 180 feet tall, where monkeys, eagles, and bats live in this layer. The sunlight on this layer is plentiful. The second layer is the canopy, which is found beneath the emergent layer. It is made up of overlapping tall trees that act as a root for the remaining two layers. It is around 60 to 129 feet tall. It contains the majority of the living organisms like snakes, birds, and tree fats. The next layer is the understory. It is consists of shrubs, vines, young trees, and trunk of the trees forming the canopy. It is around 59 feet below the ground, where many insects are found here, as well as snakes, lizards, birds, and many more. There is less sunshine which is this layer. The last layer is the forest floor. It is the ground floor, a home to large animals like wild pigs, tigers, and jaguars. There is less life here as it receives the least amount of sunlight. Warm climate, sunlight, gases, soil nutrients, and water are the important abiotic factors in tropical rainforests. Many animals depend on water and warm temperatures. Sunlight, carbon dioxide, and soil nutrients are also essential for trees and plants. Likewise, Many animals rely on plants as their food. 
producers provide food for the consumers, which include herbivores, plant-eating fish animals, and carnivores-eating animals. Herbivores provide food to the carnivores. Producers include trees, shrubs, and other plant lies in the forest. Feeding relationship like food chain and food web are current species in the forest ecosystem. The chain starts with a producer, a series of consumers, and a decomposers, while food web results from the interconnected food chains. The different organisms living in the ecosystem which interact with each other. There are interactions that exist among tropical rainforests. First is the commensalism. It is the interaction wherein one of the participating organisms benefits while the other is unaffected. Example of this is orchids cling to a tree for support and to reach out to sunlight. It can make its own food with its leaf and it, its roots absorb moisture from the air. On the other hand, the trees does not get any benefit or harm. Next interaction is the mutualism, wherein both organisms benefit from each other. Example of this is the bee, benefits by getting nectar from the orchid flower. In return, the orchid it also benefits as its pollen grains stick to the bee and get carried to other flowers for pollination. Another interaction is the parasitism, on which one organism, the parasite, benefits while the other species is harmed. Example of this is the Rafflesia. The world's largest flower is a parasite to a woody vine plant stealing its nutrient. Next interaction is the competition, where organisms compete for the same resources for survival. Almost every organism in tropical rainforests compete for resources. Example of this is monkeys compete for the fruits or flowers they consume. Trees and plants also compete for sunlight and nutrients. Then, depredation is a relationship in which an organism consumes or eats another organism. The organism that eats is the predator, while the one eaten is the prey. Example of this is an eagle eating a snake. Tropical rainforest is a habitat for plants and animals. Thus, it's important since this keeps our planet healthy. We, people survive because tropical rainforest releasing oxygen where we depend to survive. As same as the coral reefs, tropical rainforest needs to be conserved and protected because it is not just where endangered species live, but it is the place where species can be saved. Tropical rainforest protects biodiversity. Also, Tropical rainforests are good for the health of both humans and animals, as well as tropical rainforests provide a livelihood for humans and many more benefits that animals and humans can get. That is why we need to protect the tropical rainforests in any way that stop deforestation, illegal logging and mining and fire planting more trees and encouraging people to live in a way that doesn't hurt the environment. So now, let's have a short summarization about the topic. Coral reefs are the most diverse ecosystem on Earth. Thus, they are called the rainforest of the seas. They are formed from the skeletons of marine invertebrate called coral. There are three kinds of coral reefs, namely the fringing reef, marine reef, and the atoll. Tropical rainforests are the oldest ecosystem on Earth, as well as the most diverse land and ecosystem. It has a high average temperature every year, as well as rainfall. There are four layers of tropical rainforest, namely the emergent, canopy, understory, and the forest floor. 
Many organisms inhabit tropical rainforests and coral reefs. They may interact with each other in many ways, which can be through mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, competition, and prediction. So, this ends our discussion for this lesson. Hope you have learned something and thank you for listening.